Some of the greatest events recorded in the Bible involve today's letter. Mem, the waters. I live by the day and it's calling me. Fast step on the grave, don't let it swallow me whole. Today's letter is Mem, and it's pretty universally recognized as the symbol for water. It's used in Hebrew words to mean things like turbulence, upheaval, to be lifted up the way waves lift up ships, the unknown, and of course, water. We'll start out with the basics and then head into the deep. So grab your favorite drink and buckle up. Our first word is rain. Wait! Hold on, hold on. What? This episode is so noisy. It's mem, it's, it's the uproar of the sea, it's, it's tumultuous, it's yeah, upheaval. Yeah, okay, okay, I get it. But is the rest of the episode going to be this loud? Probably, here and there, <laughs> yes. The Hebrew word for rain is matar. It's spelled mem, tet, resh. The letter mem is water. The tet is a container, which is used here to mean surround, and resh is the head, so water surrounds the head, matar. These are the seas of the land of Israel and their names in Hebrew. On the left side, in the west, we have the great sea, Hayam HaGadol. This is what we call the Mediterranean today. On the right side, at the top, we have Yam Kinnereth, and this sea has been known for the last several centuries as the Sea of Galilee, where Yeshua walked on the waters. Below that, we have the Salt Sea, Yam HaMelach. We call this the Dead Sea, but in scriptures, the word is salt. The prophets tell us that when he establishes his government here on earth, part of this land here will get flattened. It's going to turn into a plain, and from that plain will rise up a mountain. Mount Zion is going to literally overlook the land. And from this mountain will flow Mayim Chayim, that's living waters in Hebrew. <laughs> 